Well, good morning to you, Victory Through Faith Church. I speak blessings on you in the name of Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. I'm looking forward to sharing the word with you today. I pray that you are looking forward to hearing the word. And so let's not waste any time. Let's go straight into prayer. Let's get the Lord involved on what occurs this morning. And then we will get into the victory nugget and we'll get right into the word. Father God, we thank you right now for another opportunity to come boldly before your throne of grace. Lord, I declare right now that as your word goes forth, it goes forward with accuracy and with simplicity. I pray that every person that hears your word will receive, will receive wisdom and revelation knowledge, Lord God. Holy Ghost, I give you free reign and free will to move in my life and to move in the hearers of the word today. I declare that wisdom and revelation flows freely as the word is preached and I declare that faith comes and rises in our hearts as the word is preached into our hearts. So Father God, I give you the praise, I give you the glory, and I give you the honor in advance for what will take place as your word goes forth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, you know our routine by now. I'm gonna share a kingdom nugget with you. I believe this nugget is gonna really bless you. And so I'm going to give that to you and then we'll get right into the word that the Lord has given me to share with you today. So I've got a very simple nugget for you. I believe is timely. It's something that the spirit of God spoke to my heart several days ago and I, I did not know it then, but he, he released me to share it with you today as a victory nugget. And so that is exactly what I'm going to do. This is what the spirit of God revealed to me for me. And then he also uh, revealed to me that he wanted me to share it with you, my victory through faith church family and all those that are fellowshipping with us online or on our YouTube page and anybody else that will come across this message, you might not be necessary, necessarily affiliated with us, but that doesn't mean that the word cannot and does not apply to you also. So very simply, this is what the Lord said. And I'm, I'm going to read. Yeah, I'll read the text first. I'm going to read a very well known text that we've all stood on at one point of a, or another if we're operating in faith to receive uh, primarily a financial manifestation from God in our lives. And it is found in Philippians chapter four, verse 19. I'll be reading from the King James version of the Bible. You know what it says, but I'm gonna read it to you anyway because faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing, amen? So listen to what the word says. It says, but my God, shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory now by Christ Jesus. Now I gotta say this because he just dropped it on me. This is a conditional promise. In other words, God says, or Paul is speaking by the spirit of God, that God will supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. However, that is conditional on us being givers because when you look at the text, if you go back up to verse 15, it says, now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Paul says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. And so the next verse is directly tied to verse 15 when he says, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. And because you did that, verse 19 applies. My God, that's why he makes it personal. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory 
by Christ Jesus. And I want to exhort you today because the spirit of God shared this with me. I think I was driving and he dropped it on my heart. He says, God will supply all your needs or the Holy Spirit revealed it to me. He said, God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Listen to this last part, not your income. That's important. That's important. God will and has promised to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, not our income. So God has never promised that he will supply our needs according to our income. He said, I will supply your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, in order to experience his his abundant supply of all our needs out of his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, we must commit to be givers. He, because remember, Paul said no church or no other church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. You know, in God's sight, giving and receiving go hand in hand. Giving and receiving are like the head and the, and the tail side of a quarter. You can't give somebody a quarter and say, well, I'm going to give you the head side, but I'm going to keep the tail for myself. In order to give them the quarter, you have to give them both sides. So as far as God is concerned, you cannot separate giving from receiving. That's why he in, in, implores us and instructs us to give so he can allow us to receive from his divine supply. So I just want to exhort you today. I want you to know that God is not limited to or bound by your income. If you commit to being a giver, if you commit to operating the system of sowing and reaping, if you commit to that, God says he will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory, not according to your income. And that's important to understand because your income can fluctuate, but the kingdom of God Never does. Amen. Praise God. So let's pray over the tithe. Let's pray over the offering, understanding that God's not going to meet your needs simply out of your income. He'll meet your needs out of his riches in glory by Christ Jesus when you are committed to the system, the kingdom system, the kingdom principle of sowing and reaping, a.k.a. giving and receiving. Let's go to God and pray over the finances. Father God, we just thank you for giving us a way to live above our means. Glory to God in the most positive sense of the word. Father God, we thank you for not limiting us to what we can earn in this earth system, in this world system. Lord God, I thank you for giving us a cheat code. Glory to God. You've empowered us to live above our income and out of your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So Father God, I pray for every person that hears this word and I pray for every person that is, that is honoring your word by being faithful with the tithe and operating your system of sowing and reaping by giving offering and seed. Lord, I declare right now that you honor your word. You're watching over your word to perform it in their lives. And because they are operating your divine principles, you honor them, Lord God, and you bless them. You meet their needs out of your riches in glory. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I thank you that there is no lack. There is no shortage. There is no deficiency in heaven. And therefore, you can meet the need regardless of what economic situation we find ourselves in. So, Father God, I speak increase. I speak abundance and I speak overflow into and over their lives right now in Jesus name. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but that's good news for me because there are some things that I desire to do. There are some things that I desire to have. There are some things that God desires of me to accomplish. And if I had to look at my own income, I would be severely limited in what I can do. But God tells me that he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So that means he's responsible for honoring his word so I can do what he said I could do. Amen. Glory to God. That that woo, that excites me. Amen. Well, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. You know, we talked about God being the goat over the last few weeks, a couple of weeks. And uh, typically, you know, the goat means greatest of all time. But we did a play on that and we shared that God is the giver of all things. And toward the end of that lesson, 
We talked about how we receive all the things of God. And I shared with you, those that remember from last week, I shared with you that the end of that lesson was pivotal or it was transitional to get me to something that the Lord had been dealing with my heart about talking about for months, for months, actually. And so today we're going to launch our new series entitled The Faith Life, The Faith Life life. And I'm just going to tell you up front right now, we're going to be here for a minute. Now we'll touch different aspects. We'll go from place to place. You know, the faith life is the house that we're going to minister from, but there are several rooms in that house that we can visit. So it won't only be one side, but we are going to share primarily about faith because I have a mandate from the spirit of God. And so he, he dealt with me about this several months ago and I was waiting for an opportunity to launch it. And I realized now that he was prepping us to be positioned to receive it when we got back to just strictly talking about faith. Amen. So I'm going to share with you what the spirit of God, what God spoke to me. Now, this was June the 5th of this year. So you're talking about July, August, September, October. You're talking about four months ago where the spirit of God spoke this to my heart and now we are here four months later where I can begin to embark on what he challenged me or what he instructed me to do. So this is what God spoke to my heart. He said, teach my people faith. Listen to me. Faith in me first, then faith for what I have provided. Then he says this, for the believers, and this is, I think this is the main reason, I believe this is the main reason why he was so intent on me teaching faith. He said, for the believers, faith must be a lifestyle, not a life raft. I'll say it again. For the believers, faith must be a lifestyle, not a life raft. Glory to God. And it, that's important because we often view faith through the lens of a bailout. Or if we, we go along our lives our own way, we handle lives the way we feel like we can handle them. And then when we reach a point to where we can't handle it on our own, that's when we act, that's when we operate in faith. That's where we launch out. That's where we get in the word and we look for scriptures and we try to apply those scriptures to the particular area of our lives because the boat is sinking and we need a life raft to save us. Well, that's not how God wants us to live. He said, I don't want my people using faith as a life raft. I want my people to use faith as a life style. Amen. And so we're going to be talking about the faith life because we need to understand faith. And I pray that I'll be able to do it as simply yet as thoroughly as possible so you can hear the word and faith will come because the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing the word. And so you're going to hear scriptures you've heard before. You're going to hear scenarios you've probably heard before, but I don't want you looking for something new. I want you to listen, expecting for God's will to be revealed. I want you to listen for revelation. And why revelation? Because when revelation is received, action is engaged. Amen. The key, you know, when you receive revelation because you act on that information. If it's just information, there's not in it. There's not necessarily any action behind it. But revelation always requires and is always accompanied by action. So it's my heart's desire that you receive revelation of faith and not just be seeking information about faith. Again, I'll share with you what he told me. He said, teach my people faith, faith in me first, then faith for what I have provided. He said, for the believers, faith must be a lifestyle and not a life raft. And along that life line, he led me to a text that I don't typically think about when he ministers or when when I think about faith or when I'm preparing to minister on faith. Although it's a very valid text, it's not one I typically go to. However, for the sake, this is like the springboard message. And so for the sake of the message, he led me to John 10, 10. And I want to read that to you. John 10, 10 is a very, if you're a child of God, it's a very well-known text very well-known scripture. And I'm going to read the B part of John 10, 10. Jesus says, 
I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus said, I came that they might have life. And we're talking about the faith life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and that you may have it referring to life more abundantly. So Jesus doesn't want us to just have life. Jesus wants us to have abundant life. That means Jesus wants us to have a high quality of life and he wants us to enjoy a good quantity. Quality and quantity is God's desire for our lives. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have life more abundantly. I believe the Amplified Version says, have life to the full till it overflows. Amen. So we know that the faith life is synonymous with the abundant life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So listen to this. No matter where you find yourself, wherever you are right now today, no matter where you find yourself right now today, there is a higher quality of life available for you to enjoy. Mm, glory to God. No matter where you are right now today at this moment, no matter how good things are going or no matter how bad things seem to be, there is a higher quality of life available for you to enjoy. Remember what did Jesus say? I came that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. He didn't even say that they might have it abundantly. He said, I came that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. And so the first thing you got to get is this, no matter where you are today, no matter where you are right now, and you might be at the pinnacle of your career, you might be at the pinnacle of your life where everything's clicking, everything's going well. Well, even if that's the case, there's still a higher quality of life available to you. But you might be on the other end of the spectrum. You might be struggling. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't, you can't tell your up from your down, your left from your right. And you're just about ready to quit and fold in, give in and throw in the towel. Hey, there is a higher quality of life available for you, available for us, available for us all to enjoy. Life on earth will never be perfect. If you're waiting for life to be perfect on earth, you're going to be severely disappointed because that will never occur. You will never attain perfection on earth. However, it won't be perfect, but we can achieve a higher quality of life when we make the right choice. Amen. So you're not going to have a perfect life here, but we can achieve a higher quality of life if and when we make the right choice. This higher quality of life can only be achieved one way. Come on now, you know I'm going with this. This higher quality of life, and I dare say this higher quality of abundant life can only be achieved one way, and that way is by faith. Amen. Glory to God. That's part of the reason God wants me to teach on the faith of life. And that's part of the reason he says that you got to teach my people faith because I don't want believers using faith as a life raft. I want them using faith and to embrace faith as a life style. So we know now that this higher quality of abundant life can only be achieved one way. And that way is what? By faith. The life God desires and intended for us to live can only be unlocked by faith. What does that mean? Because that might sound just like the, the, the previous statement I made, but there's a, there's a difference. The, I initially said this higher quality of abundant life may only be achieved one way by faith. And then I followed that up by saying the life God desires and intended for us to live can only be unlocked by faith. What does that mean? That means... That there is a quality of life that God desires and intends for each and every one of us to live, have, and enjoy. However, you know, I don't like the term, but however, if we don't unlock it, we can't experience it. So that tells me there is not an automatic way to walk by faith. It has to be an intentional choice, an intentional decision. Now, the abundant life. 
is unlocked by faith, but faith doesn't just fall into your lap. Now, true enough, and we'll get to that in coming weeks. True enough, every believer has the measure of faith. Romans 12, 3 talks about that. God has given to every man the measure of faith. But just knowing that you have the measure of faith is not going to help you because you have to operate out of, mm, thank you, Lord, you have to operate out of the measure that God has given you. And we are responsible with the help of the Holy Ghost to build and develop that measure. So that measure shouldn't be the same today as it was five years ago. That measure should not be the same today as it was last year. If you've been walking with the Lord for 10, 15, 20 years, your measure of faith should not be the same as it was when you gave your life to Christ Jesus at the new birth. That measure must be developed. It must be strengthened. It must be exercised. Amen. And it must be unlocked in order to cause you, cause us to experience the abundant life. So listen to this. God has a prescribed way for all of his children to live in order to enjoy his quality of life that he desires for us to have. I'll say that again. God has a prescribed way for all of his children to live in order to enjoy the quality of life that he desires for us to have. And you already know what that way is. But uh, however, I'm going to read it for you. Now, one thing I love about this is I don't know too many. I mean, there are some there are some scriptures in in Psalms where the writer of Psalms is very repetitive, where he says the same thing over and over and over again. However, as far as a, a mandate, that, that transverses old and new. I don't know of another scripture that appears the way this one does. And I'll start at Romans chapter one. God has a prescribed way for all of his children to live in order to enjoy his quality of life. He wants us to enjoy his quality of life. Not, not what we see here on earth. There's a quality of life that God desires for in. Wow, thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. There is a quality of life that God desires for us as his children to enjoy that mirrors his Ooh. because we're made in his image and in his likeness. So he wants us to live the type of life that he lives. And the only way to do that is by faith. Listen to what it says in Romans chapter one, verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, listen to this, the just shall live by faith. Glory to God. Let's turn to Galatians chapter 3 because I want to show you that any time a scripture shows up this many times and in and, and, and this many different books of the Bible, we need to take heed. Amen. So in Galatians chapter 3, I'll start, I'll start at verse 9. I'll start at verse 9 then I'll read in 2.11. It says, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident. Check it out. Sound familiar? For the just shall live by faith. So we saw in Romans, the just shall live by faith. We see in Galatians, the just shall live by faith. Let's turn to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Let's see if we can find another statement that mirrors what we just read. In Hebrews chapter 10, listen to what it says in verse 38. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. The just shall live by faith in Romans. The just shall live by faith in Galatians. The just shall live by faith in Hebrews. And you might be saying, well, Pastor Jay, all that is New Testament. And Paul is the writer of all that. As far as we know, we don't really know who wrote 
Hebrews per se. I lean toward Paul, but other other people differ. Other people disagree. That's neither here nor there. Well, let me give you one more text that's not in the New Testament that Paul did not author under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And for that, we, we go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. I love it because it, it phrases it differently. It says, the just shall live by his faith. Now I saved the best for last in my in my estimation because it personalizes. In Romans, in Galatians, and in Hebrews, it says the just shall live by faith. And that is true, that is accurate. However, I love Habakkuk's translation. I love Habakkuk's version because it says the just shall live by faith. His faith, implying it requires a personal application of the person that's operating by faith to use the faith that he or she has. I can't use my wife's faith. And I would really love to, but I can't use my father's faith. I cannot use my mother's faith. I am old enough and mature enough in the things of God now to where he holds me accountable to use the measure of faith that he has given me. So the just shall live by his faith. Now, when you first come into the kingdom of God, that there's a there's a period of time where things seem to manifest quickly and easily because God realized you're a spiritual infant. You don't know enough to really operate all the kingdom principles. And so he honors the very simplest of requests that you operate from. However, as you grow and develop in the things of God and as you come into the knowledge of the truth and as you gain more light on situations and issues in the word of God, you are then held accountable for the light that you know, for the light that you have. And so therefore, you have to actually put into practice the principles of the kingdom of God when before early on, I think God just kind of looked over you and said, okay, but I do this for you because I know you don't know enough right now. However, now you're mature in the things of God. You should be able to apply this on your own or you know enough about the things of God to be able to apply it on your own. So that's why up front in the faith, things seem to happen a lot easier, a lot quicker. But as time goes on, you might feel like it takes a little more effort. It's not as, as, as quick on the draw as it used to be, that's because you have to actually execute the process now. God's not just overseeing. God's not doing things out of your immaturity. Now you have to actually execute the process. My youngest child is five years old. I don't change his diaper because he does not wear a diaper. He has to execute the process of relieving himself when he goes to the restroom. And if he does not do that, he has to be held accountable for what happens when he doesn't. So it's that, it's that same kind of image to where up front, God sees to it that he does things for you because he knows you're not able to do them for yourself. But after a while, you've been in this thing long enough and you are mature enough in it to where you are held accountable for doing this on your own. Now, I've given you what you need to be successful, but I cannot do it for you. Amen. So the just shall live by his faith. Now, because this is just an introductory message, I'm not going to load you down with a lot today, but I want to do something that we probably haven't done before. I was led to actually define a few of our terms in that statement. The just shall live by faith. So let's look at shall, let's look at live, and let's look at faith before we close this thing out. Because I think it's important because it, this is the way we're going to flow for the next few weeks, probably a couple of months is we're just going to take our time with it. We're going to look at the scriptures and we're going to draw from it whatever we can draw from it. We're going to glean from it whatever we can glean from it. Because remember, we're not just looking for information. We are seeking and pursuing revelation. Glory to God, because revelation is revealed knowledge that causes action. Glory to God. So let's what the shell mean. The just shall live by faith. Shell means it, it, it expresses strong intention. And I like this definition. Shell is a term that is used in law, regulations or directions to express. Listen to this, to express what is mandatory. So when the scripture says that just shall live by faith, God is expressing what's mandatory to operate in the kingdom. 
He says, look, to operate in my kingdom, you got to live by faith. It is a mandatory. You can't even get into the kingdom without faith. It takes faith to become a child of God. So the same thing it takes to become a child of God is the same thing it takes to operate and to receive everything that a child of God has a right to. Shall means it is a regulation. It is a direction that expresses the mandatory nature of a thing. So God says that just shall live by faith, implying that living by faith for a child of God is mandatory, not optional. Glory to God. It's mandatory that we live by faith. To live the way God wants us to live. To live that abundant life that Jesus came for us to have. It is mandatory that we live by faith. So what is live? Live is very simple. The just shall live by faith. Live means to spend your life in a particular way. So God says the just shall live by faith. He didn't say the just shall live by fear. The just shall live by worry. The just shall live by stress. The just shall live by getting it on their own. The just shall live by doing the best they can. No, he said the just shall live or spend their lives in this way by faith. To live means to spend your life in a particular way. So God says the way I want you to spend your life is by faith. There's no other way I ascribe to. God says, I created you to live by faith. Even Adam had to live by faith because he had to believe and receive everything that God told him. Now, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was partaken of, and that ruined things for us as far as direct fellowship with God. But praise God for the second Adam, the last Adam, Jesus Christ, who came and restored us back into fellowship with our Father. And that's why we have to walk by faith and not by sight, because in order to receive everything from God, you're going to have to be prepared to receive it from a person you cannot see. You can't see God. You cannot see God. So in order to receive from him, you must do that by faith in order to live by the mandates and the dictates and the instructions that he gives us. You must do it by faith. And our last term that I wanted to find for you, what is faith? Faith means complete trust and confidence in. That's why he said faith in me first. You got to have faith in God first. You have to have complete trust and complete confidence in God first. We got to be solidified and cemented in the truth that God is God. Regardless of what other people say, regardless of how other people feel, regardless, even if they don't agree with our stance, even if they don't agree with our faith, that's fine. I'm not trying to make friends. I'm trying to please God. And we know we'll learn later on that faith is what pleases God. So faith is having complete trust and confidence in a being, in a person, and in this case, in God. Mark eleven twenty two says, have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in me first, then faith in what I have provided. So the, the key, oh, that's good, Lord. The major key to operating by faith and living the faith life is having complete and utter trust and confidence in God, who he is, what he has done. Amen. That is the key to faith. We're going to talk about a lot of other things in the coming weeks and months. But when you boil it all down, it's just complete trust and confidence in God. Not only is it complete trust and confidence, it's complete trust and loyalty in God. Because I have faith in God, there are some things I won't do. Because I have faith in God, there are some places I won't go. Because I have faith in God, there are some things that I won't say. Because I have complete trust and confidence in him and he has instructed me in his word that there are some things I should not do. There are some things I should not say. There are some places I should not go. There's a way I should not live. There's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of that way is destruction. So I have complete and utter confidence in God, not only who he is, but what he has done. And the last definition we'll use for faith, because we can use this, this will help us as we go further in the coming weeks. Faith is having a firm belief in something for which there is no visible proof. Now, the definition says there that it's a firm belief for something that has no proof. 
But I didn't agree with that because if you're walking by faith, you got proof. It's just not visible. So the correct definition for us as far as faith is concerned is firm belief or firm trust or firm confidence in something for which there is no visible proof. And walking by faith means that you're going to have to operate according to things you cannot see. You're going to have to make moves according to things that you cannot see. You're going to have to make declarations according to things that you cannot see. Because faith is not believing in what you can see. Faith is believing in what you cannot see because who you cannot see told you so. Amen. You can't relate to God apart from faith and you can't receive from God without faith. That's good. I'll say that again. You cannot relate to God apart from faith and you cannot receive from God without faith. Amen. So in this series, The Faith of Life, we're just going to dive into it. It's going to be faith, 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 faith. Now, you might hear some things that you might not, not, might not necessarily agree with. But if I'm coming from the word, don't take my word for it. Get in the word for yourself and see it. Because I'm not here to teach you religion. I'm not here to teach you tradition. My mission, my assignment is to teach God's word with accuracy and with simplicity. So I'm just going to teach you straight from the word of God about how faith operates, what faith is, who our faith should be in, and how we go through the process of walking by faith so we can receive everything that God has for us. Amen. Well, that's all I got for you today. I want you to listen to this message again before the week is out because I want you primed and ready as we go forward because we're just going to keep building. And I tell you up front, you're going to hear a lot of repetitive statements. You'll probably see a lot of repetitive scriptures, but you got to remember, and I'm telling you up front, I am not trying to give you something new. I am not trying to appease itching ears. My mandate is to teach you faith so that you can receive revealed knowledge and apply it to your life. So when the storms come, you've got a way to ride this thing out or roll or rise above it and live out of God's best for you. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's all I got for you today. I pray God's blessing on you and everything you do as well as your household. Remember this, you are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service. And your success is in God's word. I love you more than words can express. And I'm praying for you every day. And until next week, you be blessed in Jesus name.